Key Issue 1. Where are states distributed? A state is an area organized into a political unit and ruled by an established government that has control over its internal and foreign affairs. It occupies a defined territory on Earth's surface and contains a permanent population. A state has sovereignty, which means independence from control of its internal affairs by other states. The entire area of a state is managed by its national government, laws, army, and leaders. The United Nations is the most important global organization. It was created at the end of World War II by the victorious allies. The UN has provided a forum for the discussion of international problems. It has intervened in conflicts between or within member states authorizing military and peacekeeping actions. The UN seeks to promote international cooperation to address global economic problems, promote human rights, and provide humanitarian relief. The United Nations replaced the League of Nations, which was never effective. The UN is playing an important role in trying to separate warring groups in a number of regions. This map shows the current member states of the United Nations. When it was organized in 1945, the UN had only 51 members. It now has 193. Ancient States The development of states can be traced to the ancient Middle East in an area known as the Fertile Crescent. The Fertile Crescent formed an arc between the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea. The first states to evolve in Mesopotamia were known as city-states. A city-state is a sovereign state that comprises a town and the surrounding countryside. Medieval States Political unity in the ancient world reached its height with the establishment of the Roman Empire, which controlled most of Europe, North Africa, and Southwest Asia. At its maximum extent, the empire comprised 38 provinces. The Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century. A nation-state is a state whose territory corresponds to that occupied by a particular ethnicity. Ethnic groups have pushed to create nation-states because desire for self-rule is a very important shared attitude for many of them. Key Issue 2 why are nation-states difficult to create? There is no such thing as a perfect nation-state because the territory occupied by a particular ethnicity never corresponds precisely to the boundaries of countries. A multi-ethnic state is a state that contains more than one ethnicity. A good example of this is the United States, which has numerous ethnic groups. A multinational state is a country that contains more than one ethnicity with traditions of self-determination. The Soviet Union was an especially prominent example of a multinational state until its collapse in the early 1990s. In the 21st century, ethnic identity has once again become important in the creation of nation-states in much of Europe. The breakup of the Soviet Union, Yugoslavia, and Czechoslovakia during the 1990s gave more numerous ethnicities the opportunity to organize nation-states, but the less numerous ethnicities found themselves existing as minorities in multinational states or divided among more than one of the new states. Colonies a colony is a territory that is legally tied to a sovereign state rather than being completely independent. Colonialism is an effort by one country to establish settlements in a territory and to impose its political, economic, and cultural principles on that territory. European states established colonies in the world using colonialism for three basic reasons. To promote Christianity, to extract useful resources and to serve as captive markets for their products, and to establish relative power through the number of their colonies. These three motives can be summarized as God, Gold, and Glory. Only a handful of colonies remain today. Most current colonies are islands in the Pacific Ocean and Caribbean Sea. The most populous is Puerto Rico, with 4 million residents. Puerto Ricans are citizens of the United States, but they don't participate in U.S. elections or have a voting member of Congress. Key Issue 3. Why do boundaries cause problems? A state is separated from its neighbors by a boundary, which is an invisible line that marks the extent of a state's territory. A frontier is a zone where no state exercises complete political control. Frontiers between states have been replaced by boundaries. There are two types of boundaries. Physical boundaries, which coincide with significant features of the natural landscape, and cultural boundaries, which follow the distribution of cultural characteristics. Three types of physical elements serve as boundaries between states. Desert boundaries are boundaries drawn in a desert that can effectively divide two states because deserts are hard to cross and are sparsely inhabited. Desert boundaries are common in Africa and Asia. Mountains can be effective boundaries because they are usually difficult to cross, they are permanent, and they are usually sparsely inhabited. Contact between nationalities living on opposite sides of a mountain may be limited or completely impossible. Rivers, lakes, and oceans are the physical features most commonly used as boundaries. Water offers good protection against attack from another state. Water boundaries are especially common in East Africa. Water boundaries may seem to be set permanently, but the precise position of water may change over time. States that have ocean boundaries 
are able to claim vast areas of the ocean for defense and for control of valuable fishing areas. The Law of the Sea, signed by 158 countries, has standardized the territorial limits for most countries at 12 nautical miles. Under the Law of the Sea, states also have exclusive rights to the fish and other marine life within 200 miles. Disputes can be taken to a tribunal for the Law of the Sea or to the International Court of Justice. There are two types of common cultural boundaries, geometric and ethnic. Geometric boundaries are simply straight lines drawn on a map. Other boundaries between states coincide with differences in ethnicity, especially language and religion. Boundaries between countries have been placed where possible to separate speakers of different languages or followers of different religions. Religious differences often coincide with boundaries between states, but in only a few cases has religion been used to select the actual boundary line. The shape of a state controls the length of its boundaries with other states and therefore affects the potential for communication and conflict with neighbors. Countries have one of five basic shapes. In a compact state, such as Poland, the distance from the center to any boundary does not vary significantly. The ideal theoretical compact state would be shaped like a circle with the capital at the center and with the shortest possible boundaries to defend. Compactness can be a beneficial characteristic for smaller states because good communications can be more easily established with all regions, especially if the capital is located near the center. However, compact states are just as likely as others to experience civil wars and ethnic conflict. A handful of elongated states have a long and narrow shape, like Chile. Elongated states may suffer from poor internal communications. A region located at an extreme end of the elongation might be isolated from the capital, which is usually placed near the center. An otherwise compact state with a large projecting extension is a prorupted state. Proruptions are created for two principal reasons. To provide a state with access to a resource, such as water, and to separate two states that otherwise would share a boundary. A fragmented state, such as Indonesia, includes several discontinuous pieces of territory. There are two kinds of fragmented states, fragmented states separated by water and fragmented states separated by an intervening state. Both may face problems and costs associated with communications and maintaining national unity. South Africa is a perforated state, which is a state that completely surrounds another state. In this situation, the state that is surrounded may face problems of dependence on or interference from the surrounding state. Landlocked states are states that lack a direct outlet to a sea because it is completely surrounded by several other countries. These are some examples of landlocked states. A state has two types of government, a national government and local governments. At the national scale, a government can be more or less democratic. At the local scale, the national government can determine how much power to allocate to local governments. National governments can be classified as democratic, autocratic, or anocratic. A democracy is a country in which citizens elect leaders and can run for office. An autocracy is a country that is run according to the interest of the ruler rather than the people. An anocracy is a country that is not fully democratic or fully autocratic, but rather displays a mix of the two types. The governments of states are organized according to one of two approaches. A unitary state places most power in the hands of central government officials and a federal state allocates strong power to units of local government within the country. The unitary government system works best in nation-states characterized by few internal cultural differences and a strong sense of national unity. Because the unity system requires effective communications with all regions of the country, smaller states are more likely to adopt it. Unitary states are especially common in Europe. In a federal state, such as the United States, local governments possess considerable authority to adopt their own laws. Multinational states may adopt a federal system of government to empower different nationalities, especially if they live in separate regions of the country. Under a federal system, local government boundaries can be drawn to correspond with regions inhabited by different ethnicities. The federal system is more suitable for very large states because the national capital may be too remote to provide effective control over isolated regions. In recent years, there has been a strong global trend toward federal government. Electoral geography. In democracies, politics must follow legally prescribed rules. But all parties to the political process often find ways of bending those rules to their advantage. The process of redrawing legislative boundaries for the purpose of benefiting the party in power is called gerrymandering. Gerrymandering takes three forms. Wasted vote, which spreads opposition supporters across many districts but in the minority. Excess vote, which concentrates opposition supporters into a few districts. And stacked vote, which links distant areas of like-minded voters through oddly shaped boundaries. Key issue 4. 
Why do states cooperate and compete with each other? States compete for many reasons, including control of territory, access to trade and resources, and influence over other states. To further their competitive goals, states may form alliances with other states. Military cooperation in Europe. NATO, which is a North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the Warsaw Pact were designed to maintain a bipolar balance of power in Europe. For NATO allies, the principal objective was to prevent the Soviet Union from overrunning West Germany and other smaller countries. The Warsaw Pact provided the Soviet Union with a buffer of allied states between it and Germany to discourage a third German invasion of the Soviet Union in the 20th century.